Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our ranking member, and thank you to our witnesses here today. Uh, before I go into my questions, I'd like to make a few brief statements. But first, I'd like to say to my colleague, Congressman Sherman, next to me, I would like to be uh, included in that 30th Congressional District CODEL, uh, <laughs> along with Duffy and Cleaver. So I just want that entered into the record, Chairman uh, Duffy, that I want to go on the CODEL. Uh, now to the witnesses. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, to the witnesses here, thank you for being here. And, and certainly while we are here today uh, to talk about sustainable housing finance part three, uh, I notice that we have certainly not been absent of talking about tax reform. And I was very pleased to see uh, in your written statement, Ms. McCargo, that you address the potential impact of the House Republicans tax plan and the effect it can have on affordable housing. As a matter of fact, Mr. Chairman, I would like to submit an article for the record from uh, Politico entitled, Tax Plan Would Cut Affordable Housing Supply by 60%. Without objection. Thank you. L let me just take a, a few seconds of my time to quote from that article. And, and that article states that builders, local governments, and other housing advocates are rallying against a provision of the House Republican tax plan that would eliminate a key funding source for affordable rentals. As a matter of fact, it says the tax proposal would do away with private activity bonds, which we all know is a growing source of financing for low-cost housing. The cuts would reduce the supply of new affordable rentals by more than 85,000 units a year, or more than 60 percent, according to an analyst from the Novogratik and Company. One last thing. Private activity bonds are issued by local or state governments and are designed to attract private capital funds to large projects. They have evolved into a common financing mechanism for housing as the supply of low-income housing tax credit, the primary source of financing, and it has been outpaced by the need of low rentals. So, so with that, in hearing uh, from the articles, uh, can you briefly describe the problem you see with regards to the affordable housing when it comes to the Republicans' tax cut bill? Ms. McCargo, do you want to start? Certainly. Thank you, Congresswoman. The fundamental concerns with the how, even without the tax plan, uh, the affordable housing issue is a significant issue, uh, both on the rental and, and buy side, uh, on, on both sides of, of, of the issue. The um, low-income housing tax credit has already seen a lot of pressure going into this, and I think that the, one of the most important things as a houser thinking about what's happening with the tax plan is that the fundamental um, decisions that are made, whether it's the mortgage interest deduction, low-income housing tax credits, or other plans, is that we are continuously looking at how we can put money that is taken from one part of the plan back into housing. Um, one of the concerns in particular um, is that the, um, for example, the mortgage interest deduction, if that, if, I mean, if we're, if we're looking to really spur home ownership and, and move that forward, we might want to look at how we might be able to take what is, if that was to be reduced, those, those dollars, and how do you put those back into housing in the form of a tax credit, for example. So um, I, I just think it's, affordability is a critical issue, whether you're renting a home or owning a home across the, across the nation today, and that the tax plan and the decisions that are made to make cuts or any revisions that affect housing need to be thought about in terms of how do we make sure that we're enabling okay. affordable housing and finance. Thank you. My time's fine. 